We are here for part three of a lesson on how to describe people. Um, we did a lesson last week on how to describe people, and we went over 30 different ways to describe people. Um, actually, I think it was 29 ways. <laughs> um, and then three weeks ago, we also did a lesson on how to describe people. So this is the third, and this will be the last lesson on how to describe people. Sorry, I was just checking to make sure things were working. Um, and I'll go over, I think I have 30 uh, words today for describing people. Anyways, welcome to the lesson. Um, I think it will be a good one. I didn't give this lady a description, but I would say she looks stern. If I was to give her a descriptive word, I would say she's very stern looking. When people are stern, um, it's not exactly mean, but it's certainly not a happy look. So she is definitely stern. So again, welcome to everyone who is already here. Uh, I was saying hi to some people earlier in the chat. Thank you so much for being here. It is a beautiful fall day in Canada. And uh, actually this weekend, the video that I'm making will be about the season of fall. So it'll be kind of a fun a uh, little video lesson for Tuesday. Anyways, um, the first word today that we're going to look at is chatty. Um, so this person, I know he is just smiling, but a chatty person is a person who talks a lot. So you may have gone for a long drive before with a person who is chatty. Um, this is a rude way to say it, but a chatty person won't shut up. Okay, um, again, that is not a nice way to describe someone, but uh, a chatty person talks a lot uh, and doesn't let you talk very much. So uh, that is what a chatty person, that's how I would describe someone who talks a lot as being very chatty. Um, but in a good way, um, chatty people are usually chatty in a good way. Uh, let me get my papers organized here. Again, welcome to all the people that are just joining. We are doing part three of describing people today. Um, I'm Bob the Canadian. You are learning English with me. Uh, if you're new here, you should subscribe. And if you guys could give me a thumbs up, that would be awesome as well. There will be questions that I will answer. Uh, Todd will be posting a link in the chat. I think it's over there if you're on a computer. Uh, and I will reference and answer some of those questions from time to time, uh, from time to time. So, but we are here this morning learning how to describe people again. Um, the next one is easygoing. And you can spell easygoing with no dash or with a dash, both are fine. So let me adjust my camera here a little bit. I'm just gonna pull it down there, that's good. Um, so a person who is easygoing is very relaxed. They are not stressed about anything. They, um, these two people are definitely easygoing. You can see they're just kind of sitting on the floor, having some coffee. They don't have any worries in their day. Um, they're both smiling and laughing. So an easygoing person is very enjoyable to be around, very enjoyable to hang out with. Um, of course, sometimes easygoing people are um, not too worried about being on time. So maybe an easygoing person, if they're too easygoing, sometimes they'll be late for things. But easygoing people are very, very relaxed. Uh, again, hello to all the people streaming in. Uh, we are doing part three of describing people today, and we are currently on the word lucky. So you might know someone who is lucky, um, a person who no matter what they do, they always seem to win things. Um, maybe they win when they buy lottery tickets. Maybe when uh, they play games, they always win, uh, and they just seem to be a lucky person. Uh, so a lucky person is someone who doesn't often lose. Um, we have another phrase in English um, called um, bad luck. So when you have bad luck, um, it means that you aren't lucky. It would be the opposite. So um, anyways, uh, if you are lucky, you often win things. Uh, next word we have is uh, nervous. So. The best description I can give of someone who is nervous is a person who is going for a job interview. And so I think this guy 
looks nervous to me. He's kind of straightening out his tie um, and it looks like he's on the phone. Maybe he's calling a friend uh, just before he goes into a job interview and asking for some reassurance. Um, but a nervous person um, sometimes is like, oh, I'm so nervous. Um, they're a little bit afraid. They're a little bit tentative. Um, so a nervous person, um, it's not a nice feeling to be nervous, by the way. Um, it's nice to feel confident, which would be one of the words that is the opposite of nervous. Uh, let me jump in and see if there are any questions. I know there are a few. Um, let's see. Um, Gaga has the first question here. Let me paste it into the chat. Gaga says, how do I know who's being honest when I first meet them? What would you do if you knew someone was treating you deceitfully? <laughs> well, what I would do if someone was lying to me or being deceitful is I, I would probably call them on it. And what that means is I would just say, I think you're lying to me. Um, I'm a very bold person. I tend to be very straightforward when I talk to people. So if I knew someone or I sensed someone was lying to me, I would probably just ask them if they were. That's not the best thing to do, but that's definitely uh, what I would do. Uh, again, hi to everyone in the chat. Um, let's see. Oh, Lolly asks if I'm nervous when the live starts. Lolly, a long time ago, when I started doing lives, I would be nervous, but I've done them for over a year now. Did you know that? It's been over a year of doing live lessons, and uh, I think I've gotten pretty used to it. I'm always nervous, though, um, that something won't work properly, that the technology will break. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry about that. I don't have a sore throat this week, so uh, let's see here. Uh, Dimitro from the Ukraine asks, Bob, are you a, st a stern teacher? Um, I can be, but it depends on what class I teach. So in the upper level computer class, I think I'm actually a very relaxed teacher. My students might say differently, um, but I think with younger students, I'm fairly stern, I think. Um, but still, I try to be a happy teacher. I think the happier a teacher is, the better. Let's see here. Um, Patricia just mentions the word chatty. Patricia says chatty means talkative. Very much so, yes. So if someone is chatty, they are 100% a talkative person. Uh, and then Manny has the follow-up question. What's the difference between chatty and talkative? They mean the same thing. So someone who is talkative, um, you would also describe them as chatty. Um, and then we'll do one more question. Um, Dimitro from the Ukraine says, um, hi Bob, are lucky people on a roll? So when you're on a roll, it means that you've won something and then you've won something again and then you've won it again. So you're on a roll. You have a number of wins in succession. So sometimes a sports team can win three games in a row and you would describe that team as being on a roll. So it means that, you know, they won three and they're on a roll and you would hope that that winning streak would keep going. There's another word for you, streak. Um, let's get back to the lesson though. This person is a serious person. Um, so when someone is serious, they're, they're not uh, a lot of fun. <laughs> um, a serious person doesn't laugh a lot. Um, if you tell them a joke, um, they might not laugh at your joke. <clears throat> so a serious person uh, is someone who, if you see this guy, he's, he's very serious. He just has this um, straight face and uh, he's not smiling. He's definitely not laughing. Um, so we have this person who I would say is a serious person, very serious. I am not a serious person in some ways. Um, <clears throat> I uh, sometimes I think I need to be more serious. Uh, I tend to joke around too much um, sometimes. Um, the next one we have here is what I am sometimes. Sometimes I can be too silly. You see this girl has on a fake mustache and glasses with fake eyebrows. She is a silly person. I think it's a girl, yes. Um, she is a silly person. A silly person, um, 
sometimes needs to be more serious. Sometimes a silly person tells jokes when they shouldn't. You know, maybe it is a serious moment in life and they're still laughing and telling jokes. Um, so a silly person acts silly. Um, they tell jokes, they laugh a lot. And uh, generally I think silly people are fun to be around, but sometimes silly people can be a little bit too much. They can be overwhelming, but I would prefer silly over serious. What would you choose? Would you rather hang around with a serious person or a silly person? Let me know in the chat. Um, I'm not sure if we did this word before. I checked my other lists and I don't think we did this word, but uh, this is vain. A vain person thinks they are the most handsome person in the world or the most beautiful person in the world. Uh, a vain person is always making sure their hair is perfect and their their beard is perfect if they're a man. Um, if they're a woman, they're making sure that their makeup is perfect. They're always looking in a mirror and they think that they are just better looking or more attractive than all of the other people around them. I think this guy looks a little bit vain. I'm not sure if he really is. Uh, but you can see he has this look in his eyes, right? That he's thinking, I am, I am very handsome and uh, I am a very vain person. Um, credible is the next one. Let's do one more and then we'll do some questions. Um, a credible person is very trustworthy. So I thought this man, he's wearing a very nice looking suit. Um, he looks nice. He has a pair of glasses on. He looks very smart. Um, so a credible person is someone who is trustworthy, someone who in the past has proven that they are a good person. So I thought this person looked very, very credible. Um, if this person was wanting to sell you something, you would trust him because he looks credible. And hopefully you know him uh, and you know that he is a trustworthy and credible person. <clears throat> Let's check the questions again. There are a few here. Let's see. Um, Vinicius says, Hi Bob, how can I describe someone who is accessible and kind like you? Willing is a good word. Is it correct to say thanks for... Well, we would say thanks for your willingness to help or thanks for being willing. Those would be the two ways to say it. How would you describe someone who is accessible and kind? Um, <clears throat> I just have a little tickle in my throat. Do you know that phrase? In English, I don't have a sore throat. I just have this little tickle in my throat. So I'm going to cough. I'm sorry, it's going to be loud. <clears throat> I think that should have fixed it and I'll take a drink of water. So in spite of the fact that I'm making awful noises with my throat, you're learning a little bit of English. Um, I would say kind, um, agreeable, accessible, um, someone who gives of themselves, Vinicius. So I think that's what you're describing. When you give of yourself, um, you're willing to take time with people and spend time with people. So that's how I would describe that. Um, Jolly K, sorry Jolly K. Jolly K says, I want to ask you, and then there's no rest to the question. So Jolly K, if you want to post that again, I would be happy uh, to answer that. Um, not says, not from Vietnam says, hi Bob, do you teach English on a website like italki? I don't. So I don't teach one-to-one, -one, um, mostly for two reasons. One is I already have a full-time job. You can see my classroom behind me. Um, in about an hour, students are going to start coming in uh, and I, I will be teaching a French class this morning. Um, so I'm very busy working full time um, and I only do YouTube in my spare time. Um, someday, maybe, we'll see, but I really like my job. I, I actually really like teaching. So it's not something that I want to quit so that I can teach more online. I'd rather just do both the way I'm doing it. So no, that's the, that's the question. And Francesco has the same question, do you teach English with online lessons on Skype? No, I do not. Sorry guys, uh, maybe someday. Um, let's see here. Um, 
Almaz, hello, Sir Bob. How often do native speakers use perfect tenses? So that's a tricky one. We use them all the time, but we don't actually know that we're using them. So think about your own language. When you're speaking your own language, do you actually know what verb tenses you're using? You don't, it's just automatic. So yes, we use them. If you were to ask an English speaker, um, there, it would be tricky um, to, uh, to have them do that. Um, English Danny says, what's the difference between describing people's appearance and people's personality? Most of what I'm talking about uh, in terms of describing people is personality. Um, a few of the things that I'm using uh, are actually what they look like. So the difference would be like someone who is adventurous versus someone who is beautiful. So beautiful would be describing their physical appearance, whereas adventurous is describing their personality. Most of my describing people lessons have been about personality. Uh, let's do one more. Um, let's see here. Oh, here's Jolly K. Um, let me see. I'm not sure what Jolly K is. Uh, sorry, Bob, but the name Bob is used to talk about the typical American male with stature and a mustache. I, I don't know. Um, Bob is just a very common name in English. I'm not sure about your description, Jolly K. Um, it is a short form of, uh, Bob is a short form of the name Robert. So my real name is Robert, obviously. Um, and Bob is just what we would call a short form uh, or a nickname. Um, <clears throat> Zara says, um, let's see here. Next one. Um, let's see here. Okay. Zara the Iranian says, Hi, Teacher Bob. I'm at work at the moment, but I don't want to miss your class. I corrected it there. Uh, please tell me if somebody is always sad without energy. Can I say she is negative energy transfer? That depends. If someone is sad all the time, we might say they are a little bit depressed. Um, if someone has no energy, we might say that they're feeling fatigued or tired. So that would be a physical description of them. Um, if it's someone who, when you're around them, they make you feel tired, we, we would say, uh, uh, I would just say that person is just a lot to deal with, or that person is um, a real downer sometimes. That's how I would describe that. Anyways, back to the lesson, people. The next word is boastful. So this guy is a fisherman, and I picked this picture because when someone is boastful, it means that they exaggerate the truth a little bit. Oftentimes, when people go fishing, they catch a fish this big, and then they throw it back in the water, and when they come home, they tell everyone they caught a fish that was this big, which we would consider kind of boastful or exaggerating. A boastful person is often talking about things that they have done uh, and that they are proud of, um, but a little bit too much. So someone who constantly talks about all of the good things that they did and maybe exaggerates a little bit, we would consider them boastful. Um, a gentle person, I have a picture of a really calm horse here. Uh, a gentle person is someone who speaks quietly, um, speaks with a really nice voice, uh, someone who is always content and some, somewhat happy, um, someone who isn't easily excited. Um, gentle people are really nice people to talk to, especially if you are having problems in life. It's nice to talk to a gentle person. Um, I put a picture of a horse because I thought this horse looked really gentle. The horse looks really calm. And the horse, I think, is just having a quiet moment out in its pasture, uh, out in the field. So gentle. You can also use this to describe pets and animals, of course. Um, but some really big dogs can actually be quite gentle. So a really big dog might seem mean or intimidating, but a really big dog might actually be quite gentle, especially when playing with children. Um, Someone said they think I am a gentle person. I, I try to be, to be kind, um, but you have to realize that I am um, 
I have my moments where I am not a gentle person, so I'm just <laughs> like everybody else. Um, let's see here. Um, next one, <laughs> foolish person. <laughs> so this one makes me laugh because you see this man and he is out on a branch and he is cutting the branch <laughs> so that uh, once he gets through the branch, he's going to fall, right? So he is being foolish. Um, a foolish person makes bad decisions. Uh, a foolish person does things like this. Um, I think we have all been foolish at one time or another in our lives. I know that you have all done something foolish at some point in your life. Um, one time uh, I left, uh, I bought a coffee at a coffee shop and I put it on the roof of my car so that I could unlock the door. And then I got in my car and I left the coffee on top of my car. And then the first time I stopped, the coffee fell and spilled on the windshield. Hopefully you understood that story. I was with my oldest son at the time and he really laughed. Um, but a foolish person does something dumb, does something silly or stupid. The word stupid is tricky though, don't use it too much, but um, because stupid can be an insult as well. So we would say this person is doing something dumb. He is being foolish. Um, <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of questions in the chat um, and uh, I don't always have time to answer them, but I do read them later uh, and it's kind of fun to see what you guys talk about. Um, Sometimes people need to be adaptable. When you are adaptable, it means that you can change your plans in the middle of doing something and it doesn't concern you. So you'll see this person has plan A, plan B, plan C, and plan D. This person, I think, whoever made this sign is very adaptable. So they're going to do a project and they have a plan, but if that plan doesn't work, they'll do the next plan. So they are very, they've thought ahead and they are very adaptable. They are very flexible in their thinking. So um, it's good to be adaptable in life, especially when uh, you live in a world filled with technology. I just wanna say hi to Sally Moon. It's her first live lesson. I'm just gonna say hi to her. I don't normally say hi to people, but I just noticed that <laughs> Now everyone hopefully is gonna want me to say hi, but welcome Sally to your first live lesson, that's awesome. But also welcome to all the rest of you. Um, I just noticed we're over 500, that is awesome. I'm gonna do a few more questions. Um, so Michelle has a question here. <clears throat> Michelle says, what does chanty mean? That is not an English word, at least that I'm familiar with, okay? So chatty, that we talked about earlier equals, you know, someone who talks a lot. But chanty, as far as I know, is not, uh, is not a word, Michelle. So let's see. Mikhail, how do we describe people who always do wrong things? So if you mean people who always do bad things, we just call them bad people. You know, if someone is always stealing things or someone is always... Um, you know, doing something that's against the law, we would say they're bad people. You know, oh, there's a lot of bad people that live in that part of town. But if you mean someone who's always making mistakes, um, we might say that they are just clumsy, or we'll say that they're not thoughtful, or we'll say that they don't plan things well. So there's no specific word for someone who makes a lot of mistakes. So maybe you work with someone who makes a lot of mistakes. Um, we don't have a specific word for it. So let's see here, <laughs> Jesse the Canadian. Um, let's see, um, I'll put this one in. Jesse the Canadian says, hi Bob, nice to see you again during the lesson. Uh, Bob the Canadian, you rock, thank you very much. Uh, by the way, if you tell someone they rock, it means they're doing a good job. Um, I like your way of teaching th through the live lesson. My question is, how would you explain the word vain? So we did the word vain earlier. Maybe you just popped in. I can't find it back, Jesse. It's in this pile somewhere. But we had a picture of a guy. Here he is. We had the word vain. Someone who is vain thinks they are the most attractive person in the world. Um, 
So if you think you're really handsome um, or you think you're really beautiful, so guys are handsome, girls are beautiful, okay? That's the difference between those two words. And you think you are the most attractive person in the room or in the world, you are vain. That's how I would describe it. Um, let's see here. Victor says, hey, Bob, what do you feel or how do you feel about introverts? So an extrovert is someone who loves talking and loves talking to lots of people. An introvert likes to do things by themselves. I'm an introvert, so what do I think about introverts? I love introverts. Uh, they're my favorite kind of people. I know I'm here giving a lesson to hundreds of people, but I very much like my quiet time. I like walking by myself, I like reading, I like doing a lot of things by myself and very quietly. So. I am definitely an introvert. Um, Saeed from Somalia says, uh, what does grumpy, what is a grumpy person? A grumpy person is just, I'll make my grumpy face, is just always annoyed about something. A grumpy person um, is always having a bad day. A grumpy person, when you tell them good news, they, they tell you bad news, right? Or um, a grumpy person, if they order food at a restaurant, it's never done properly. So grumpy people, they're just not happy. <laughs> just not happy at all. Um, genre Genre says, uh, can you de define the word impudent? So I'm actually going to look it up because we don't use this word much. Um, but usually when we talk about kids who are not respectful, we would say they're impudent, but we, we hardly use that word anymore, the word impudent. Um, it's something that you'll see in books if you're reading books, but it's not a very common uh, English word at all. Let's see here. Um, not from Vietnam says, can you explain this question, this sentence to me, please? That guy got away with his crime. That means he committed a crime, but he didn't get arrested and he didn't go to jail. That's not good. Next word, adventurous. You can see these people are climbing a mountain, it looks like. Adventurous people love to do things outdoors that are exciting. They go skydiving, like they jump out of airplanes with a parachute on. They go mountain climbing. They go white water rafting. That's when you ride a boat down a really fast river. So adventurous people just love to do uh, lots of things fun things outside that have an element of excitement. Diligent. So a diligent person is always on time for work. They always do a good job. They uh, rarely miss a day of work. See these bees? Bees are very diligent. Bees work very hard. Um, bees um, when there are flowers where they need to go and pollinate, they go and do the work. Um, and you can describe people the same way. Um, when someone is diligent, if you are a boss and you need to hire people, you want to hire people who are diligent. Uh, that's a good thing to do. Next word, exuberant. So I put a picture of a small dog. An exuberant person or an exuberant pet has lots of energy. They are just always excited and ready to do whatever you suggest. So think about if you have a dog and you're about to take your dog for a walk, your dog is probably like jumping up and down with excitement. Um, your dog is very exuberant. So exuberant uh, is a great word to describe someone who has lots and lots of energy, loves talking, loves doing things, is always excited to go out with you. Um, someone is asking the difference between grouchy and grumpy. They are the same. So grouchy and grumpy mean the same thing for sure. Um, pretty much the same thing. Here's a good word. All of you who watch sports will understand this. You want your referees, you want your umpires to be impartial. That means that they don't favor one team over the other. Um, 
Yeah, Jess Vinder says, I think Oscar is exuberant. Yes, he definitely is. And Samuel Chen says, hi, greetings from China. Hi, Samuel. Um, when you watch a sports game, you want the referees or the umpires to be impartial. You don't want them to say, well, I like this team better, so I'm going to give yellow cards and red cards to the other team. What you want is you want referees who look at everything fairly and they use good judgment in order to make their calls. Um, you always want your referees and umpires to be impartial when you are having any kind of sporting match. A witty person is funny. A witty person um, can find humor in every conversation. Um, so I put here, this is a stand-up comedian. This is someone, if you went to a comedy club, uh, you would see a stand-up comic or a stand-up comedian. Um, so a witty person is good at making jokes, okay? Um, <laughs> so anyways, that person is witty. This word comes from the word boss. So when you work somewhere, the person you work for is your boss. But you can also describe someone as being bossy. And you might know someone uh, who is bossy, someone who is always telling you what to do. You can have children who are bossy. So if you have kids, you might know that one of your kids is kind of bossy. One of your kids is always telling the other kids what to do, and maybe they're even telling you what to do. So again, a boss is a person that you work for. So I have a boss, um, but the word bossy is used to describe people who um, are always telling other people what to do. You can even have colleagues or coworkers who are bossy. Um, and that makes work kind of an interesting place to be when someone is telling you what to do who isn't your boss. Um, I'll do one more and then we'll do some questions. So people can be clingy. Um, this is a hard word to say, clingy. Just say it out loud, I don't care where you are. Maybe you're riding the train, just say clingy. Um, this is what we call cling wrap. So this plastic wrap, when you put it around stuff, it kind of it kind of grabs onto it, right? Like it it get it kind of sticks to it a bit. So when people are clingy, it means that they um, they won't go away. Um, you might know someone who is clingy. Maybe there's a certain person when you go to a work party that as soon as you get to the party, they they come and they start talking to you. And then they, they won't leave and go um, talk to other people. They kind of cling to you a little bit. Um, physically, we could have children who are clingy. Um, my, one of my kids when they were young would actually like hold on to my leg, my pant leg. They were very clingy. Um, they didn't like to run around and play with the other kids. They would kind of cling to my leg. So a clingy person is someone who holds on to you or hangs out with you. A little bit too much. Materialistic. That's a big word, isn't it? <laughs> materialistic. Want me to say it one more time? Materialistic. A materialistic person buys a lot of stuff. There is a fear that I have that we live in a very materialistic world. We live in a world where people keep buying things even when they don't need them. So here you can see this lady has four three shopping bags. She has just done some shopping. She might be a very materialistic person. She might really like buying lots of things and she might, uh, she might not need them. So we live in a materialistic world where people are always wanting to buy the next best biggest thing. And honestly, I'm not sure if that's a good thing. You can tell that I'm not materialistic because I have shirts, blue shirts. Do you like this one? It makes the screen look a little funny, doesn't it? Um, I have blue shirts. Some are as old as 20 years old and I keep wearing them because I don't like buying things just for the sake of buying them. Hopefully that, that makes sense to you. People who are materialistic, yeah, Sarah, Sarah, they love money. They love shopping and they love buying things. So try not to be too materialistic, people. It's not always a good thing. Let's see here. Um, we're gonna go with Manny says, 
Um, are narcissistic, self-absorbed, egotistical, the same meaning, somewhat. They are all in the same camp. They have slightly different feel, uh, meanings. Vain applies more to how you look. Uh, self-absorbed applies more to how you think. You know, you're always just thinking about things to yourself. Egotistical would be more than just looks. You think you're the best looking, the smartest, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and narcissistic is when you think you're the only person that matters in the world. So they all mean slightly different things, but they're very, very similar. Um, Demetrio says, um, oh, I have to delete one here. Demetrio says, could you please explain the difference between smart, clever, I think in British English, smart is used, sorry, clever is used like smart, and in North America, it is used like intelligent. So if I was to say a student is very clever, a student is very smart, a student is very intelligent, they all mean very much the same thing. Intelligent would probably be the best compliment. If you say someone is intelligent, it means they're really, really smart. If you say someone is clever, it means that in certain situations, they can figure things out. So I think it's just degrees of smartness. So if you're, if you're clever or smart or intelligent, but they all mean that you are uh, pretty smart. Let's see. Let's see. Um, maybe I should do this this week, but, or next week. Elijah says, how do you describe people physically? So w maybe I'll do a lesson on that. We'll see. I have a different plan. Um, this lesson on describing people and it being part three, this is the last lesson on describing people. Next week's lesson will be something a little different. Um, so maybe I'll do a lesson in the future on how to describe people physically. It gets tricky though when you talk about people's uh, bodies. Let's see here. Michael San Jose. By the way, I'm not going to get through all the questions. Um, Mike here from the Philippines. How do I deal with the language anxiety whenever I speak English? You just need to speak English. So you're really nervous, right? We learned the word nervous. It's hard to speak English, but the more you do it, the easier it will get. Again, Lolly asked earlier if I was nervous to do live lessons. Honestly, a year ago, I was very nervous to do a live lesson, but I just do one every week. Sometimes I do two. Um, and uh, you just get used to it. You get more comfortable doing it. So just do the same with your English. By the way, there's no live lesson tomorrow night. Sorry, I have another dinner to go to. So, um, but you can watch this video again tomorrow if you want, and you can turn the subtitles on. That'd be a great idea. Um, and again, if you're new here, uh, please click that red subscribe button. Let's do the next question. Let's see here. Uh, Nizam is from Indonesia and says, nice to see you, you too. Um, what's the difference between reluctant and stubborn? And please give an explanation. If I am reluctant to do something, it means that I have a few reasons why I'm not sure I want to do it, okay? So maybe someone invites me for dinner and I might be reluctant to go because I haven't talked to the person for a long time and the last time we talked, we kind of got in a fight. So I might have reservations, I might be reluctant to go because I'm not sure how it's going to go. Stubborn though simply means that there's no reason not to go. You just don't want to go. You're just being stubborn. You're being obstinate. That's another word for stubborn. So slightly different meanings. I would look up both those words in an English dictionary uh, to get a better uh, distinction between the two. Let's see here. Um, Polly says, what is the difference between irritable and fractious. So we don't use the word fractious. Um, that is, um, yeah, I'm not sure if that's used in Britain, but we only use the word irritable to describe someone who is irritating. So not the second word there. Um, let's see here. Duke has the question, um, hi, Bob. Do you have any word to describe a person who comes to work late and leaves early or too soon, uh, usually doing stuff during work time? No, but I would say that's someone who's going to get fired at some point. Um, I would say it's not a lazy person, um, but it's someone who, it would be the opposite of diligent. It would be the opposite of hardworking. So I would say that person is going to lose their job. I think they're going to get fired. 
Hopefully it's not you. You're not describing yourself, are you? A selfish person um, doesn't give away very much money, does not volunteer or work for free. A selfish person only thinks about themselves. They are the opposite of generous. So in describing people lesson one, we talked about people who are generous. So a selfish person is not generous. They, they keep everything. They never give anything away. A narrow-minded person, you can see these signs here, says, I am right, me too. So both these people think they are right. Narrow-minded people um, think that they are right and they are not willing to talk about other points of view. So if, if we were, to, let's pick a hot topic like climate change. Some people who believe that climate change isn't happening are not willing to talk to people who think climate change is happening. Um, so they, you could describe them as being narrow-minded where they only think their thoughts uh, and their point of view is important. Someone who is obstinate is the same as stubborn. So it's someone who is resistant to doing new things. Um, and someone who is unpredictable is, you know how they say the weather is unpredictable? So when someone is unpredictable, you don't know what they are going to do in certain situations. Um, so someone who is unpredictable um, is, it's kind of like the weather, you know, they might be happy today, they might be sad today, they might smile at the joke, they might get angry with you. So um, I just saw someone asked, how often do you live stream? So I live stream quite regularly at this time. It's Friday morning at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I usually do a lesson on a topic. Um, I will return uh, in a couple of weeks to doing a Saturday night question and answer live stream and that's at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and I do that from home on the farm. So I normally live stream two times per week um, but I've been busy on the weekends lately so I've only been able to do it on the Friday morning um, but I will be doing a live lesson a week from now on Friday morning and I will be doing one uh, on a Saturday evening again. So um, I shouldn't promise that though because I've, my my calendar is pretty full right now. That's how you say that you're somewhat busy. Let's get through the rest of them. A secretive person doesn't really talk a lot about the things they are doing. Um, so they, um, maybe they're going away and they don't tell anybody and you don't find out till they get back because they are a little bit secretive. A gullible person is someone, this machine here says, uh, it says gullibility test, put in a dollar. And I think if you put in a dollar, nothing happens. It simply proves that you are gullible. So in English, we would say someone who's gullible, um, they're easily taken advantage of. They believe people too easily. Uh, and oftentimes they are taken advantage of. So you might have to look up some of those words. Uh, an indecisive person has trouble making decisions. So you might say, do you want to go see a movie tonight? An indecisive person might say, ah, uh, yeah, mm, no, maybe, um, I'm not sure. So they have trouble making a decision. A finicky person or a cat <laughs> is someone who has trouble, um, not necessarily making a decision, but they're very particular. I'm assuming this cat is really finicky and he only likes this kind of food. And if you buy this kind of food, the cat won't eat it. So the cat is finicky. And then last one here, my favorite kind of person, someone who is cooperative. So a cooperative person is very fun to work with. They are just good at, if there is a job to do and you do it with someone who is cooperative, you would each do half and you would just really have fun while you were doing the job. Um, Anyways, I see a few people are leaving. We are almost done. I'm gonna answer two more questions, even though there's a lot of questions here, sorry. Um, I'll start from the bottom. Sorry, I can't answer them all. Um, Nieves Joe says from Seoul, hi there, what's the difference between a nice person and a good person? Well, a nice person is someone that you like talking to and they ask you about your life and they, they give you compliments. They are just 
friendly and nice. A good person can also be a nice person, but a good person also chooses to do the right thing all the time. So a good person would give money um, to charity. They would be someone who donates. So, um, and uh, oh, Ginny asks, do you always get up quite early to prepare the lesson? I do a lot the day before. I am someone who likes to plan ahead. I don't like to do things at the last minute. Let me do one more question. Uh, let's see here. Polly says, oh, about the word fractious. Polly says, hi, Bob, just looked up fractious. It kind of has the same meaning as irritable. Yeah, I think it means the same thing. Honestly, that was the, I have, probably a pretty big, large English vocabulary. And that was the first time I saw that word this morning. So um, not a common word at all. I read a lot and I, I think I have a fairly good handle on the English language, having spoke it for you know over 40 years, but that was the first time I saw that word. So anyways, let's do one more question. Uh, let's see here, OG says, oh, where are we here? Oh, I just posted it twice. Well, there we go. Hi, Bob, I'm from Indonesia. My question is, what do we call a person who is easily offended? Yeah, that's a tough one. Uh, some, it, the modern world is that we call them a snowflake. That's a new term. Um, so someone who is easily offended, you might call them a snowflake. Um, snowflakes melt really easily. Um, but that's just a, a new word in the last couple of years. We've started using that word. So. Anyways, guys, uh, you should come back and watch this video tomorrow with subtitles on if there were words that you didn't understand or parts of the phrases you didn't. It's always good to listen to the video two times. Um, even just put it on in the background while you're making supper um, or preparing a meal. Um, I'm Bob the Canadian. You are learning English with me right now. I will have a new video out on Tuesday and there will be no live lesson tomorrow night, sorry. Uh, if you're new here, don't forget to click that subscribe button. If you could give me a thumbs up, that would be awesome. I'm so happy that my voice worked this week. I feel way better. Um, so anyways, that's good. Um, someone's asking about the schedule for the live streams. So this, I will type that in the chat in a moment, but right now I'm going to push the stop.